Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa, a new DLC which came out yesterday for Unity of Command 2. Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa takes a look at the Eastern Front in World War II, puts you in the shoes of the Germans, and asks you invade, to invade the Soviet Union. It's a DLC that covers June 1941 until the winter of 4142 with the Soviet counteroffensives in front of Moscow and includes more than 20 battles uh, that allow you to fight through the, the initial German invasions. Battles uh, like the Drive on Riga, the Battle for Minsk, the Battle of Smolensk, uh, the battles in the Ukraine around Kiev, etc., etc. Uh, it's a really interesting DLC. I think it's very well done. My initial impression so far has been very positive, uh, and I really enjoyed specifically the uh, army group center battles around Minsk and Smolensk so far, which I've played through. We're not quite to Smolensk yet in this game, but I've played through those battles on my Twitch channel live streaming, and I really like sort of the open field sort of deep penetration of the Russians that you see in Minsk, and then things become, I think, very historical and well done as well in the drive on Smolensk when you still have to worry about some troops in your rear while also driving even further into the Soviet Union. Uh, the, all of these scenarios in the game really capture sort of what I think David Stahl talks about in his um, Operation Barbarossa and Germany's Defeat in the East book, uh, where it really start, sort of talks about sort of that overextension of the Germans, the difficulty of the infantry keeping up with the armored spearheads, the difficulty of using armored units increasingly even just holding the front as they try and hold back against Soviet counteroffensives, you know, all while being kept on just outrageously tight timelines and no time to even refit or rebuild engines or things like that. It's a very well, well done DLC. I haven't read a ton about the Eastern Front. Um, I know there's a lot of great books out there. I have been reading Stahl's books lately, uh, and that's sort of, uh, I see a lot of you know, that modern scholarship reflected in the game, and I think it does a really good job. With that being said, we're not here to talk about books I'm reading. We're here to be playing some more Unity of Command 2, so let's jump right back into this. This was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel. Link in the description if you want to follow me over there, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, by the way, we are just, we just finished the first three battles of the campaign, which it ends that first conference phase. So in this game, you get... Uh, conference phases that break up different parts of the campaign and when you go into a conference you can then use prestige points that you earn in your battles to sort of re-equip your your um your deck or your cards that can be used to give you extra air power extra supplies other things like that you can also use your prestige to upgrade your headquarters so that they might be able to have better range in terms of supply uh different types of tactics or or um, you know, capabilities such as set piece attacks, bombardments, building pontoon bridges, all these other things. So it's a very gamey kind of a mechanic, obviously, but it lets you use your prestige to upgrade your headquarters before you send the, your, your troops into the next set of battles. So that's what we're jumping into here. And then we'll also fight the first battle of this next conference in today's video. And that's going to do it for the initial three battles in the German invasion of Russia campaign. Now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and hit this button here for the next conference, which is sort of a break between campaigns. You can see the map moves east to represent our drive to the east, and you can see the next campaign battles are represented with these little keys. But before we can get to that, we have to choose what we want to do with our cards. So we draw a new deck of cards, and you can see here one of these is a theater asset, is a uh, support card for one extra tactical error. Definitely going to need that. It'll cost us 40 prestige, so it'll drop off of up here. Um, otherwise, the other ones we have here, we get one free recon theater asset. I'll always take a free card. Um, and then we've got two additional truck units, which I am going to go ahead and spend 50 prestige, 25 on each to get those truck units because trucks and supplies are so vital in this particular game and especially in these big sprawling campaign maps. At this point, we now have the option to upgrade our headquarters. So you can see here we've got Army Group North, Panzer Group 4, Army Group Middle, Panzer Group 2 and 3, and then Army Group South and Panzer Group 1. We can use Prestige to increase their movement range uh, for the trucks, uh, which allows HQs to move greater distances. We can also use the points to unlock things like for the Panzer Groups, they don't actually have a set piece attack, which is really useful in reducing fortifications. 
um, for our infantry units, they could probably use the ability to make pontoon bridges, but I'd have to spend like 125 prestige just to get there just for this one army headquarter group. So I don't actually think I'm going to spend any points on any of this right now. I think my headquarter range is reasonable. I guess maybe for army group south, we'll expand it to 11 because I think middle and north are both at 11. Uh, the panzer groups are at 10 each, I think. And I do want to keep some prestige so that we can buy some extra units before the next battles. So we're going to keep that as is for now. I don't have enough prestige, I don't think, to, to spend lavishly. Um, all right, so with that being said, we'll end the conference. And you can see the next battles in the north are Piskov for Army Group North. Uh, and then it will be the Leningrad approaches in this campaign for Army Group North. Army Group Center just has the Battle of Smolensk, which is probably going to be a big one. Two Panzer Groups and a middle group. Uh, this was a huge battle. Um, if you if you read David Stahl, he seems to make the argument that uh, the Germans reached sort of their maximum uh, abilities in terms of mobile warfare at Smolensk, and after that, their their mobile arm was so badly depleted that they had basically lost Operation Barbarossa after the Battle of Smolensk. He, he kind of positions it as this, and he's not, by all, by all means, he's not the only historian, but he's just the guy I'm reading right now. He positions Smolensk as sort of like this hollow victory for the Germans where they captured hundreds of thousands of Russian prisoners, but in the aftermath of the battle, their units were so hollowed out, so beat down, so in need of refit and rest that they really had no feasible ability to keep pressing on uh, regardless of the situation. Um, in Army Group South, it looks like our next battle will be Munchen, uh, which, I don't know, is this, this Bessarabia, or... Yeah, it's the drive into Bessarabia. And then after that, we'll get the Ukraine. I don't know if this is Kiev itself, though. So it looks like a bonus objective is Kiev. If we take Kiev, then that'll influence future battles and probably give us an alternate history scenario. If we don't take Kiev, then I'm assuming the next conference will have the actual battle of Kiev. Um, so let's jump back into this. Piskov, June 30th, 1941. Army Group North has crushed the Red Army's northwestern front and crossed the Dugovina. Greeted by his liberators by large portions of the Baltic state populations, the Wehrmacht storms forward with its eyes now set on Piskov. The Red Army, on the other hand, is reeling from the initial blow. While faced with, or while failed counterattacks have depleted most of its armored formations. Well, this should be easy then, right? Let's just say Franz Halder does not come off very well reading most of these histories. <laughs> uh. Despite your stunning drive to Dugavina, it seems the Red Army is not throwing in the towel just yet. It has even managed to mount a few rather costly counterattacks. Regardless, a few more bloody blows and surely the Soviets will crumble. Your next main target is Piskov, a vital supply node on the road to Leningrad. Simultaneously, your westernmost forces must continue clearing the Baltic states. Once you reach Estonia, you can even expect help from local militias. Okay. Does that mean we get militia reinforcements? We get a bunch of IDs. It does look like we get a couple of uh, Estonian militia groups that rise up to support us. All right, so we're across the river here. We've taken Riga. We've got a couple of elite, or I don't know what these stars represent, Soviet units. I, I, I'm assuming it represents them being veterans, but my veterans don't have those stars. Oh, come on. I'm not across the river here yet. That's going to suck. I don't even know if I've got the ability to amphibiously assault across. I may have to shift these troops north. All right, so what are our objectives here? We've got to take Piskov, Parnu, and Opacheka. Um, Piskov is here. Opacheka is here. And Parnu is here. 
We've got infantry on the other side of the river of Riga, but they're surrounded by large enemy infantry and tank formations. We do have a couple of armored formations across the river here. And we've got a couple of Soviet units that are cut off behind the lines. I can't give those guys any... Uh, I wanted to give them some artillery to help them in the defense. I guess I can give these guys some artillery. Engineers, maybe? Stugs? Four on the attack, six on the attack. Let's go with the engineers. All right. And... Go with the eight rod. You have crosses where they have stars. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that. Okay, good call. Okay, that's gonna do it for our pre-battle. Uh... Oh, what about trucks? Don't forget about the trucks. All right, let's pull these tank these tr these trucks back and deploy. One here. Pull this truck back. And then we'll deploy. Three here. We can do that or deploy him here. I don't know that it makes a difference, but. All right, so that's it for this pre-battle phase. Let's go ahead and jump into the fight. Yeah, there's definitely puzzle aspects to the game. All right, so we get a quick overrun of the enemy. Wipe out a couple other surrounded divisions. Get some nice experience bonuses to two German infantry divisions. And then we can swing these troops north. All right, so can we attack anybody with the chance of success down here? Not really. I can't even cross this pontoon, although I do need to cover it. Because the enemy could cross it to attack me. Let's do this, actually. Let's pull this unit back, drive this mechanized formation across the river, and move these infantry over here. That way our mechanized troops will take the brunt of the enemy counterattack, and I think they'll do better on the defensive versus those enemy troops. Meanwhile, I can't cross here, so what do we do here? I mean, we've got to take... We've got a bunch of secondary objectives. Nothing needs to be taken immediately. Zero to three there, drive those enemy troops back. Can I move this infantry into this town? I can't. I don't think they have the ability to move across up across major rivers and do a river assault. So I'm gonna just move my mechanized troops out of the uh, southern bank of Dagafils. Um, mixed units are motorized units. So these are like motorized formations. Those are the tank and infantry units combined. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of enemy troops. So zero to four overrun. All right, that was a pretty good attack there. I'm hoping they don't drive toward the bridge and cut us off. We'll see. All 
headquarters unit for our armor will move into this town to keep in supply or in contact with everybody. My ground headquarter will try to shift north so it can also support these troops near Riga. We get flying artillery, which will be nice against enemy fortified targets, but I don't have any of those right now. This enemy armor here, a little bit of support damage to it. Um, no obvious targets to hit with our precision airstrike at the moment. Flying artillery will, will hang on to as well. And then the turn. Oh, wait, we have more more units coming on the map. So we've got a couple of Estonian militia, but I guess we haven't we have to take those hexes for them to come online. So I can't use them yet anyway. So on the turn. So the enemy did pull back from Riga. Okay. Let's me drive my troops across here. And let's hit. Guys, we'll drive them back. Oh, that was foolish. Oops. My bad. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't have anyone left on the, that bank of Riga. Hopefully they don't move this unit here and take it, because that'll cut me off. Tree day. Wow, we killed five of them of the bastards. Okay, so we've broken through here. Let's move our infantry across. Secure that bridge. Ostrov by turn five. I think I need to hold this flank. Flying artillery, there's got to be a fortress around here somewhere. I don't know where, though. There's too many one level depots. I'd like them to concentrate a bit more before I hit them. Do we have anyone coming online this turn? We do. A bunch of infantry divisions. Assuming they're all coming online on these two exits. Nope, not everybody. Do I have any motorized or is it all? It looks like it's all infantry. I can't move them into the same hex. Oh wait, there's a there's a armored headquarters. That's why. All right, so that'll do it for this turn. Move forward to turn number three. It's kind of a quick, quick battle so far in terms of how quickly we're moving through the turns. They didn't move into the uh, other bank of Riga, so that works for me. 
God, there's so much enemy infantry around here. I'm gonna attack those guys. Advance east across that railway to try and allow us to bring those troops, those mechanized troops on the other end of the uh, front in the supply. Let's look at a none of these guys have particularly good attack odds. I'll take two to one against enemy armor. Keep moving that infantry in that direction. North and east. Can I swing up there? Hell yeah! Go for the deep drive into the enemy rear here. Motorized troops moving up to try and take this depot to supply themselves, then they'll swing east toward Piskov, way in the enemy rear. Let's hit these guys with the zero to two. They'll actually kill four. Overrun and take that enemy depot. Move toward Ostrov. Got no kills there? Really? Hmm. All right. Well, these guys should be out of supply for two turns, so I might be able to swing my infantry south to take them out. Going for a risky, just move your armor out all by yourself, deep into enemy terrain this turn. So we'll see if we can take Opachika and Ostrov here quickly. Secondaries are by turn five. That seems highly unlikely, but we'll see. One last infantry division coming online here. We've got two Estonian units. Still can't deploy them. So we'll end that turn. Oh, well, we do have air attacks. I just am not using them. And they did nothing. What does the enemy have out here, by the way? Check out, they've got a, several infantry units. Ostrov. Yeah, that's a pretty strong enemy force in my front. All right, well, we'll see what, uh, what we've got in store for us. Slowly pulling that infantry north. A couple of bridges getting blown here. The interesting thing is they blew one of the they blew the road bridge near Ostrov, but not the railroad bridge. through let's hit this enemy infantry here we support damage so we can hit them for a zero to two I actually get two kills there
zero to two and an overrun, so we'll drive north. Taking a whole bunch of casualties here, but we've broken through CC by turn five. It's turn four now. So that seems definitely possible. Um, turn two by turn eight. And what's the other one? Ostrov. We'll see. Zero to two and an overrun. going to be out of supply next turn for three turns and that should let me get the rail across although I really could use like a pair drop supply I just realized these guys are going to be out of supply for three turns Threatening Piskov as well, which I don't know what the enemy has there. These guys, these guys still have some movement points, but they can't really attack, so we'll... Alright, I don't know that these guys are going to be able to attack next turn this headquarters forward and see maybe they'll have enough points to give them like emergency supply I guess we'll see because I don't know that I'll be able to attack until I can clear that that road that rail you know I do I have any of the Estonian militia yet not quite They're still just out of reach so we'll end this turn move forward to turn number five Yeah, Sean Mack, that's a fair point. The game could use a little more music. It's all very samey, every battle. It's like the same tune. Right, give me, give me the... Ah, damn it. I don't have the... Emergency supply. Oops. Why, though? Is it because the headquarters unit doesn't have supply? Estonian troops in now? Not quite. Uh, Alright. Zero to two. Get those guys. supply on that railroad. is what to do here because these guys don't have supply they're not really gonna have supply unless I pull them back there's no way to attack here because I don't have supply 
So logistically, I probably should pull these guys back since there's no way to take that objective anyway. So these guys should be back in supply next turn. No retreat, eh? I think that does it for this turn. Again, I still don't know where to really use this flying artillery. I think part of the reason there's very few games that cover Barbarossa from the Soviet side, Flame, is I just don't know how interesting it is to get your teeth punched in for six months. Like, from a gameplay perspective, you know, you're gonna just get knocked around for a while. I just don't know how entertaining that is. Alright, so we've cleared Dogafills, so we should be able to bring supply for it on this railway now. We can move up and take Ostrov because, well, there isn't any... not an objective anymore so the enemy abandons it yeah I mean individual battles definitely I think you're right I mean, there are games you can play as the Soviets in Barbarossa. You can play War in the East 2 as the Soviets in Barbarossa. You can play the Soviets in Cauldrons of War, Barbarossa. Um, but a lot of those games really do lean more into you playing as the, uh, as the Germans. Tends to be the focus, anyway. Pull these depots back here. They're not helping anyone out. Headquarters forward. Pull this depot back. All the supply forward next turn. Got a KIA on that unit. And I think we'll use flying artillery the next turn. Oh, we probably also can call in the militia now. Okay, so move forward to the next turn. Okay, so they deployed some fuel depots, and that's it. They moved a headquarter unit. Can these guys not really? All right, we can give them emergency supply. Let's hit these troops here with air. It does nothing. The goggles, they do nothing. All right, so we took that objective. The first of our objectives is taken. No retreat to KIA. So we're not gonna get everything on time because we're supposed to win this turn for on time. Doesn't really hurt us at all, just kind of points. Well, she can move up here, we'll move these troops down this way. Oof. That 
was rough. Going for that secondary objective of Tardu, which we have till next turn to take. We did drive the enemy out of Parno. Actually. Overrun, take that. Depot would have liked the militia to be over near Parno. I should have moved them after I moved my infantry to attack. Then we probably would have gotten that objective. All right, so we'll move forward to the next turn. Kingslip, where's that? All the way up here? Yeah, we're not getting there. I think that's also a secondary objective. Kingslip, it would allow us to like take Leningrad early rather than go the, the siege route. Yeah, air is pretty much RNG. King is set. Okay, so... Attack and overrun. that secondary objective. And we got this primary objective. didn't work. <laughs> I should have attacked a countryside unit with that, sw you know, sweeping bombardment. Is there any way to... Yeah, I don't think we're bypassing and driving up toward King Asep. Man, that's a tough one to take. I wasn't... I was a little bit glib on this, this battle. I didn't maybe played as carefully as I could, but that would be very challenging to take. overrun but it's a swamp so I can't move again just gotta kind of grind them back any way to track three two one tatus thanks for the follow trash paying dang thanks for the follow Saren 20 thanks for the follow yeah this is just gonna be a slog get three support down there stupid city attacks Chaco fan, thank you for the follow. Wipe those guys out.
Just the one objective to take. Two more turns to take it. We should be able to do this. They've got a lot of troops down there, but we're starting to bunch our troops up also. So I think what we can probably do this turn in is if we don't take it directly, we'll surround it on, or we'll, we'll get around it on multiple sides. headquarters unit which is way down here that I've been neglecting I need that further forward and it just isn't keeping up although they will be in, in contact next turn so they can do a set piece attack or something like that need these engineers is what I need Attack. Nice. All right, we'll make the play. Let's actually pull these guys back. Get this artillery up here. So we'll make the play for Piskov next turn. I think we'll get it. We'll be able to attack from three sides. No, you pay for your reinforcements. The only free stuff is if your divisions are destroyed and those divisions need to be in the next battle, the division will be reconstituted, but it will come in as a green unit. That was a very effective attack. Treat KIA, city in ruins, however, we did a good job there and we drove them out. So we retook, or we took the city, and then we managed a, an attack there that gave us will wiped out one of the potential counterattack threats. Those guys up. They can only attack the city from one direction at this point. Go ahead and try and weaken them a bit just so they can't... I mean, I'm taking casualties here that I wouldn't want to take, but it does allow me to make their counterattack less likely to succeed. My goal was to knock that enemy unit out of that position, but I guess that failed. In any event, we weakened them, so hopefully they don't counterattack. Meanwhile, let's get a free, some free experience up here and some prisoners. And there you have it. safe there. All right. Well, we got two of the secondaries, Sessi and Tarto, and all of the primaries, although only one of them on time. And that should be a victory for us. Brooksy1809, thanks for the follow. So the enemy's not even going to counterattack, as, as best I can tell. So we get a victory there. It wasn't super pretty. We took a fair bit of casualties, 20. The enemy lost 50, 62, uh, and uh, we only scored 172. So not the, not the prettiest battle. We kind of rushed through that one. But uh, you can see there, Piskov, a victory. So now the next battle on that front will be the Leningrad approaches. We have to finish Smolensk first, and then presumably Munchen, and then we'll get a second phase of the campaign, which looks at Ukraine and the Leningrad approaches. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my continued uh, look at this brand new DLC, Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa. It is available on Steam. It did come out yesterday. Uh, we just fought the 
uh, Battle of Piskov, so the next battle in the uh, Army Group North's campaign, uh, driving further east into the Soviet Union uh, with its eventual drive toward Leningrad. In our next video, we'll be looking at the absolutely epic Battle of Smolensk, which is a, a gigantic battle in Army Group Center's camp. Uh, which I kind of was alluding to at the beginning of this video. You've got to deal with sort of the leftover pocket that was still behind the German lines after the Battle of Minsk, uh, while also driving further into the Soviet Union in an effort to take the key city of Smolensk and the land bridge between several rivers in its quest to drive on Moscow. And Smolensk in many ways is kind of a turning point in the campaign where the German forces begin to become so worn out over these vast distances that they're covering and the more than uh, more than expected Soviet resistance that their forces begin to be, especially in the armored divisions, begin to become combat ineffective. Seeing uh, tanks drop from you know their 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 original strength to like twenty five percent or in some cases less than that by the time Smolensk concludes. So that by the end of the Battle of Smolensk, historically the Germans were in desperate need of resting and refitting their forces but they didn't have time to do the amount of, of refits that they needed uh, before the Russian winter. And so that's when you start to see some of those dilemmas facing the Germans. You really see a, a big struggle between the German high command and Hitler over the direction of the future campaigns after Smolensk. Do they turn south? Do they help the drive against Kiev uh, and a large Soviet encirclement there? Or do they try and drive on Moscow, which was not, you know, undefended as, as some of the post-war histories maybe try to portray it as. Um, but, uh, but that's a topic for another day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, this is the historical gamer saying, thank you very much for watching. And until next time I'm out.